Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to the Tech Talk today. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to host the, you know, today's talk, um, Tech Talk. Um, let me introduce him. Um, his name is uh, Satoshi Yamaguchi from uh, Hitachi um, Central Research Laboratory. So he's going to present us about the interactive um, flat simulation system on the Earth Viewer. Please welcome Satoshi. Hi. Thank you for coming to my tech talk. Uh, today, I, want to, I will talk about the technology and application of interactive flood simulation on Earth Viewer. Uh, thank you for Tosan. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me and our team to make a presentation here. So at first, let me talk about the motivation of this study. Uh, we start the stu uh, we started the study because flood a serious disaster now. Uh, as you know, uh, Cyclone Nargis attacked Myanmar or Burma last two, uh, two weeks ago, and about 34,000 uh, 34, people were killed by the cyclone. Uh, but uh, a lot of flood occurred in the world. According to Red Cross, uh, 93,000 uh, people are killed in this decade. And economic loss is also huge. Uh, 20, uh, 12 billion US dollars are uh, lost in Japan only in 2004. And in addition, higher chance of flooding is expected in the future because of climate change. According to IPCC, there is a high confidence, a high confidence in the increase of extreme weather event. It means drought, heat wave, and floods. Uh, increase, of, uh, temperature, increase in temperature causes increase of humidity and increase of precipitation. But the increase, uh, not, uh, the change not occurred in temporary and spatially even, I mean, uh, extreme weather will be increased. So uh, last week, I attended the international conference uh, on flood defense. At the conference, flood uh, climate change is a very hot issue. Uh, almost all research uh, focused on the climate change. Flood will be more serious problem. What should I do? I think. Uh, Simulation will, good to, uh, will be a good tool to mitigate a flood disaster. Uh, to mitigate a flood disaster, we need preparation and evacuation. Before the flood, we should prepare for the flood. And in case of a flood, we should evacuate. But to act correctly, uh, accurately, uh, we, we need precise information on floods. Simulation is a good tool to generate such information. And I believe to mitigate, uh, to build uh, awareness of flood risk, flood risk, uh, convenient uh, tool for general public is needed. That's why we create the, our product. The name is DeoVista. DeoVista makes simulation easy to use. DeoVista makes simulation easy to understand. Uh, too easy to use, uh, we make uh, automatic setting functions. And to make uh, simulation easy to understand, we provide uh, interact, uh, intuitive graphic user interface. I will show you some of our application. Uh, this is our uh, product, uh, DioVista. You can see the globe, and you can see any and anywhere in the world. But it's not uh, only a viewer, but also a simulator. Now, we are going to a city in Japan. Uh, this is Fukui City. And 2004, in 2004, there's a huge uh, water hazard happened. Uh, you can see red door roads here. This is a uh, Levi Fera Point. So, from this uh, red section, 
the water spread into the city. Now I will simulate the situation on this uh, my laptop computer. I start. I just uh, okay. I start. I click start button. Then I click start button again. Now this simulator calculating flood flow on the city. Color indicates water depth, so you can understand how complex water flow is. There is a, a railway railway on the bank here, so water stops here, and there is a, a big a street, and water flows along the street, and there is a Carbat or underpass here, so water flows through the underpass and go another area like this. Uh, urban uh, flat in urban area is very complex problem, so we need a simulator to assess flood risks and to make evacuation pro pro uh, decision. Uh, our simulator can simulate uh, a lot of situation on this computer, like this. Now I add another conditions. Uh, I break this uh, levees, so water flows uh, this levy, like this. So you can understand how easy our simulator simulate uh, complex phenomena, and how fast our simulator is. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. I will go ahead. Uh, I don't show uh, this uh, list uh, now, but if we connect this simulator to house database, we can generate this kind of uh, list. In this list, you can see owner's name, address, and water depth. And you can understand the number of damaged house in this simulation. So it's very convenient to assess the damage of flood. I, I, validate, I validated the flood result using a comparing site investigation and simulation. A red line indicates the site investigation, and blue line indicates the simulation. A simulated flood area covered 91% of investigated flooded area, and investigated flooded area covered 87% of simulated flood area. So it means uh, very accurate uh, in, uh, to use uh, pra practical use. Okay. <coughs> I will show you another application of flood simulation. Before uh, previous demo, I showed the levy failure simulation, but in this simulation, in this demo, I will show you a whole process from rainfall to overflowing. For the simulation, we use river data like this. Uh, this is a transversal cross section of river, and this is a, a cross section of rivers. Upstream is here, and downstream is here. And uh, lateral is uh, distance from the origin point of river. Using this river data, and uh, we also use uh, rainfall data, uh, we simulate the whole process. Again, I will simulate the, simula uh, the flood. Now, this computer calculating the catchment area. Catchment area means the area in which rainfall uh, goes to uh, this river. Now, uh, you can see the change of river uh, water level in the river as time goes on. Time is indicated here. All the processes are calculating now. And uh, flooded. So I will back the simulation. You can see clock is uh, going back. And now, at this time, 
crowd of God, we zoom in the overflowing point. You can see red cross here. This indicates overflowing point, and along the river, flooded area spread. Uh, this is a flood simulation done by us. OK. Now, I will talk about technologies behind the simulator. In the simulator, we use three modules, uh, simulation modules, mapping modules, and user interface module. All the modules, uh, in, the, in each module, we use different coordinate. So it means in the, each module, we use different x, y, z, and t, because we use four-dimensional coordinate. And to integrate all the system, we convert it coordinate uh, in real time. So simulation module's time are converted to mapping module's time, and vice versa. And in the mo simulation module, we use uh, four models. Runoff model, river model, levee model, inundation model. Uh, so using these models, we simulate from rainfall and flooded area. This figure indicates the schematic view of our simulator. Uh, runoff model is uh, used for mountainous area. River model is in the river. Re Levy model is in, used in levee, uh, and inundation model is used in cities. In each model, we use different uh, kind of equations. Like this, in the runoff model, we use a so-called kinematic wave equations. I think nobody knows uh, this equation. But uh, and the setting of the runoff model is very complex because for each, uh, each slope of mountain, we should generate the network of a model. I mean, uh, in this figure, uh, you can see the slopes and the lines. This line indicates the steep direction, steep direction of a slope. So along this line, water goes down, and finally goes to river. Uh, this red line indicates river. So all the slopes are connected to this river. We need to generate this kind of networks. It's so, it's so tough work. And in the river model, we use different kind of simulation uh, equation, so-called one-dimensional unsteady flow equations like this. And from river to city, there is a levee or a dike or uh, some uh, artificial structures. To simulate this, we use overflowing formula like this. And in the city, we use also different kind of equations like this, uh, so-called shallow water equations. Using this equation, we calculate water depth and water speed for each grid. You can see the grid. Uh, so as time goes on, each grid, uh, water depth and water speed on each grid is calculated like this using ground elevation and ground roughness. But it's not enough for simulate in urban area because in urban area, there's a lot of artificial structures like uh, railways, wide street, culvert, et cetera. Uh, as, uh, I think I showed this uh, before. So, uh, I sh so I should simulate all the, this kind of artificial structures using other uh, equations. It's so difficult uh, simulations. So what we did is automatic automation of a setting of a whole process of simulation. Use, uh, the main technology is uh, dynamic domain definition method or a dynamic DDM. 
uh, this technology is used for Nandesh model and the runoff model. Uh, usually, uh, we need a grid for simulating flood flows. So we need, we need to generate grid before simulation, like this uh, green indicates the grid. A difficulty of finding, uh, so green or orange indicates domains. Difficulty of uh, defining domain is uh, fl flow must not reach boundary because in this situation, we could not simulate anymore because water reached the boundary of domain. And we cannot simulate this situation because uh, Overflowing point, this is out of domain, so we cannot simulate this. And you can find a lot of dry grid in this area. I mean, there's no, uh, uh, there's a lot of grid without water. It's so needless to calculate. So what we did is uh, domain is uh, expanding shrink domain uh, during simulation. Like this, we use both a simulation module and a mapping module. At first, we input levy failure condition and mapping module generate domain around the levy failure point and then calculate for water flows on the grid. But soon, water reached the boundary of the grid a domain. So mapping module generate other domain like this. Again, I can simulate flood flows but soon reach the boundary. So mapping module at the domain like this. If uh, out of domain, uh, levy failure happened out of the domain, we can generate domain like this. It's a very sophisticated system. Calculating simulation is very uh, much, much faster than conventional method. And we do not need care about the define of a define of a calculation domain because calculation domain is automatically defined by the, this dynamic DDM. Another uh, application of dynamic DDM is setting of a runoff model. Uh, runoff mo define the runoff domain. Uh, runoff model is also the same difficulty. Uh, we need to define the calculation domain before analyzing the runoff model. Uh, like this, uh, if uh, I calculate, uh, if I do define the domain, we can generate the network of runoff model, but uh, catchment area must not exist out of the domain. And uh, you can see a lot of uh, orange grid here. This is non-catchment area. This should not be exist in the domain for faster calculation. So I use uh, runoff, uh, dynamic DDM for defining the runoff model. At first, we input uh, river conditions, and then uh, the dynamic DDM spread the uh, calculation domain like this. So to upper stream, uh, the calculation domains are automatically generated we do not care about the calculation domain. Uh, then I will, set, I will talk about applications of our product. Case one, application by local government. Uh, this is, uh, the, this, in this case, client is Ota City, Gunma, Japan. They want to build risk awareness among public. Uh, because in the, in the city, there is a very steep slope. So if flood happens, flood flows, speed is very quick. So citizens should be evacuated very quickly. So the desired, inc desired information is easy to understand the contents. That shows how quickly water, flood water spread. So what they did is provide three-dimensional computer graphics movies on their website. Uh, I showed the website. 
Uh, you, if you access this site, you can watch the web movies. And they use uh, movies at public meeting about flood mi mitigation uh, because this uh, content is very easy to understand. Application two, application by insurance companies. Uh, at this case, uh, client is Phoenix Risk Research Institute. Uh, it, it's subsidiary of Nisedova General Insurance. They want to assess possible water depth, available time, and damage of properties of their client property. So. Uh, they advise, and they want to advise property owners on countermeasures. So desired information is quantitative what if scenarios because uh, they want to provide quantitative advice. Activities they did is simulate several flood scenarios using this product. Uh, this poster is. Uh, uh, I, make, I made this post, uh, presentation at uh, United Kingdom last year. It's a poster of the I make presentation. And the last case is uh, application at technical seminar. Uh, this product is used in International Center for Water Hazard and Risk Management, or ICHAM. It's Japanese governmental organization. Uh, but uh, to build a uh, risk awareness for international communication. Uh, purpose is uh, teach how to map flood, disaster, flood hazard. So uh, ICHAM want uh, software that is uh, powerful and but be run in short time. So ICHAM did is gave a lecture with uh, our product. Uh, participant on the lecture came from over 20 countries from China, Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, etc. So using this product, they make a hazard map and discuss about the appropriate information. Okay, I will mention our conclusion briefly. Uh, flood are serious disasters, and flood will be serious disasters in the future because of climate change. We need to mitigate disasters. And uh, to mitigate disasters, we need information. Simulation and mapping technology can contribute a lot to build uh, uh, such information. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Satoshi, for the presentation. So you don't, if anybody in the audience has a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, <coughs> you said um, levy failure point manually. Uh, is it possible uh, for your system to predict where and when uh, levy failure occur, will occur? Uh, at present, we could not, we cannot do that because levy failure is very difficult to produ uh, predict. But uh, I will conduct a research for that. So I hope in the future we can predict that automatically. Any other question? So I have one question. So it might be an area of the application of this system. Um, I wonder if maybe some, uh, you know, the government or a construction company may be interested in when they have uh, some plan to build some kind of large architectural uh, building or wide road in some city, which might have uh, some risk of the flood. So could you, can we use this system to, you know, assess the, you know, possible risk by constructing those kind of wide, you know, large building or, you know, and then we can compare the current and, you know, the future after we construct that building. I think it can be done. 
simulation is useful for assessing uh, possible uh, land use change or urban design. So uh, I think it's simulations, uh, this kind of simulations could be a very useful tool to do that. Is there any other question from the audience? Okay. Thank you, Satoshi, again, you know, for the presentation <laughs> Thank you. today.